Hello, my name is Bart Brecka, and I want to share a video with you today on the basics of Creo. And I'm going to create a soap dish and just kind of do some very basic functions. Uh, before I start, however, I'd just like to show off the Design Engine blog and uh, have you notice that there's a handful of jobs to the right hand side and uh, various articles on product development and design and engineering. Okay, so uh, what I have open is the Creo Parametric 1.0 tool. And what I want to do is just show you where, where some of the, if, if you're familiar with Pro Engineer, where some of the commands are. And if you're not familiar with Pro Engineer, just the basics of Creo. So what I'm going to do is set my working directory. We've probably had 10 calls already this month. Hey, where's set working directory in Creo? Here it is, manage session. Erase not displayed. So I'm going to click on my working directory and uh, just go to uh, our network drive. And, and I'm going to right hold down in the window here and create a folder and call it uh, test video. So I've created a folder where if I store my files, I can retrieve them. So I'm going to create a file new. Of course, we can do a sheet metal part or what have you. I'm just going to do a, a, a new part and I'm going to call it uh, BART. Okay, so I have uh, a default set datum plane, and I'm going to create a sketch on one of the planes. Hi higher end pro engineer people that may have learned pro engineer 10 plus years ago uh, tend not to gravitate towards this sketch tool. They'll first go to this tool instead, which you can obtain the same sketch. I think it's a better workflow to just create a sketch. It gives you more flexibility for modifi modifying the model later. So a, a soap dish is probably not quite that large, so I'm just going to drag my mouse and scale it down and hit the checkbox. Now, notice the sketch is still selected. If I turn off my datum planes, you can see the sketch is still selected. It's green. If I left click out here, the sketch is no longer selected, so I can res reselect it this way. We can right hold down and go edit definition here to make a change to the sketch if we wanted to turn it into something else. We could get back to the sketch and make a change to it. If I wanted to drag the sketch around, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not inside the edit definition. I'm not redefining the sketch. I'm just dragging it around. So I made it just a little bit smaller. So my, my workflow is to grab the sketch and to perform some operation to the sketch, in this case an extrude. Now I can drag the sketch any size I want. So instead of hitting the middle button, I just left, uh, in, I'm sorry, instead of, instead of uh, hitting the checkbox, I just hit the middle button, and I was able to sort of uh, complete the function, if you will. Now I've got basically two features here that make up the sketch. So I'm going to left click, right hold down, and unhide that sketch for a moment. And I'm going to reach over here and just kind of right click through and grab it. Look, I can, I can drag the sketch now to change the size of my geometry. If I double click on it, which is normally the workflow you would do if you didn't know Creo at all and you just knew Pro-E, you just double click on it and come over here and start changing these numbers. Hit Control G to regenerate. This time I'm going to come over here and hit, hit the 8, um, 34 and make it 5 and hit Enter. And instead of hitting... Uh, regenerate, I just left click out here in this area twice. So it's kind of the same thing. So a good soap dish size is probably 5 by 3. And I'm going to hit regenerate just because that's what I'm used to doing. Control G in Wildfire 4 or 5. Now what I want to do is add draft to the part. Draft is something required to make the waffle fall, fall out of the waffle iron. And the same thing occurring in a plastic plastic part design. So, you know, if you look around, it's pretty easy to ultimately find the tools you're looking for because PTC has adopted the Microsoft standard for the ribbon. I'm going to grab the draft function and pick something. Now, most engineers are just going to, they know they want all four edges. I'm just going to suggest as you start learning Pro Engineer to just kind of pick one thing, get the draft function to work. I'm going to I'm going to hover over here 
and I'm trying to grab just that datum plane. So I'm using my right click to, to grab, uh, I turned it on. I grabbed the datum plane there. And so uh, what, what that is, is is the draft hinge that I can pivot my draft about. So minus draft, plus draft. So I'm going to come back now into this window and add to the selection set. So that's, that's, that's my workflow, and I suggest that even to advanced users because sometimes it can be frustrating when it doesn't work like you expect it to. Just get one thing to work, get it, and then add to that selection set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a radius to all four edges. So what most high-end users do is they'll left-click and, and use their control key to select all four edges, you know, and rotate over here to get the fourth edge, and then evoke the round command. Okay, so what I want to do instead, I'm going to delete that feature. I just left click here and hit delete. What I want to do instead is left click, move my mouse, left click, move my mouse, left click. Look, I got all four edges. I believe that might have been new in Wildfire 2, but a lot of people don't know that. I know when we get people for training, some of the really high end users coming for surfacing training learn simple stuff like that because they, they never took a Wildfire 2 update type training class. So now I'm uh, middle clicked and left clicked out here and I'm going to add another radius to the top. But instead of grabbing the radius first, I could just grab that edge and hit the radius or I could have grabbed the radius first. So I'm, I'm changing the radius. Now I, I, li I suggest to users to not make both radiuses the same because I want to see a four part boundary here and a lot of you know FEA meshing algorithms are a lot more um, forgiving but uh, the it oftentimes in the past CNC machines and algorithms have a hard time if this becomes to a point if both the radiuses are the same that's going to be a three part boundary so now I need to shell out the part and, and when I hit shell, the shell tool doesn't automatically remove anything. So I actually have to pick a datum plane that needs to become removed out of this geometry. And there it is. So I'm just going to middle click and left click out. So just a basic soap dish, if you will. And now the real power of Pro Engineer is not how fast you model something. I know a lot of people talk to us about SolidWorks and, uh, and Rhino and these other tools. With with Rhino, you have to you you can't change the model like you can in Pro Engineer, and I'm going to try to illustrate that now. So what I've got is a default datum pl plane with a sketch on it, and I can take and sort of drag that sketch around and get real time feedback as I make modifications. I've always said it's not how fast you model something; it's how fast you change it 20 times that makes you an expert. And with Pro Engineer, you can do that. So that's my video. Consider coming to Design Engine for Training in the near future. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen. <laughs>